We are back with clinical psychologist Dr. Nicole LaPera talking about healing relationships and how now she's going to answer some of our questions. Okay, our first question comes from Kendra, and she's got a question about her relationship with her mother. Take a listen. Anytime I call and try to have a conversation with my mom, it always ends up in some type of argument, and then I end up leaving the conversation defeated and upset. Where can I even start to repair our relationship? I feel it in her voice right yeah. now when she's talking about yes. it. I want to send compassion to Kendra and all of us out there who are struggling with conflict or fighting in relationships with our loved ones. And conflict and fighting, arguing, and all the stress that comes with it usually comes when someone in the interaction is feeling emotionally vulnerable mm -hmm. and their body is becoming stressed. So practical tips here mm -hmm. are, I think, the first go-to usually is we think, oh, I wish my mom would just stop doing this or start doing this other thing so that this fighting can be avoided. The more empowering would be to focus on what we can do mm -hmm. to remain calm and grounded like in what? those moments, would which you? would be practically setting a boundary, mm -hmm. um, either avoiding conversations or difficult topics, ending the conversation when difficult topics come up. Also, when the phone call happens, checking in with ourselves. Am I already too stressed, too overwhelmed with whatever's yeah. happening in my day? And pause. might a pause or calling this person back yeah. be better? Or if I'm on the conversation already or in the phone call already, as I notice those shifts that we were just talking about earlier in my heart rate, in my muscles, in my, in my breathing, beginning to slow and deepen my breath so that I can remain calm and grounded regardless of what the other person's doing or saying. Do you do acupuncture or do you exercise or what other things do you do? Exercise and stretching for me because I carried so much tension in my muscles, particularly yeah. my mid to upper back from being braced, yeah. um, waiting for the next shoe to drop, quite literally, through decades of my life, have been a game changer. And that, for me, was gentle, small, yeah. not 25 minutes a day. Wow. I started with eight-minute practices on YouTube. Cool. Wow. Okay, cool. our next question is from Daria, who is a self-proclaimed people pleaser. Oh, yeah. I consider myself an empath that often leads to people-pleasing tendencies, and that leaves me drained. How can I break this habit? By the way, that's so many oh, people, that's right? People. <laughs> Let's all raise our hands. Yes, um, and again, tending, suppressing our own wants and needs to please another, being energetically sensitive to the world around us is absolutely emotionally draining. Yeah. So to break the habit, we really do have to commit to expressing our true wants and our needs. So being connected, to what they might be. To know what they are. To yeah, know, exactly. To even know. To well, know what they are. To listen to yourself. And so usually what we do, and this, this awareness is a beautiful first step, noticing those moments where you're feeling instinctually, mm -hmm. you know, going into pleasing mode or getting ready to say yes when you mean no. And if it's coming, you know, through a text, delaying the response, taking yeah. a few minutes before you can deliver that yes or that no in true authenticity. Or if someone's in real time, having a conversation or talking to you like on the phone, you can ask them, say something like, I need to think about it. Yeah. Can I get Pause. back to you? Yeah, Second just, important step though, is to make the choice to honor your wants and needs. Yeah. This is the hardest part. Yeah. To you know navigate all of the discomfort, the worries, the fears about disappointing or upsetting someone that That's might it. prevent you from making the choice, making the choice and then dealing with the discomfort of the upset that you might be on the receiving yeah. end of when you right. violate this this expectation. But you also know it lasts so sh you have to listen right. to yourself because you're going to say I can't do it and it's over. And it's over. You know what? It's over. Okay, here's Melissa. She wants to build more meaningful connections. Let's take a listen. Hi, Dr. LaPera. In some of my friendships and relationships, I haven't been feeling quite like myself. What do you recommend I do in order to attract and develop more authentic connections? Well, Melissa, I want to offer the suggestion first and foremost to honor that awareness and to celebrate it. It's a big thing when we are able to tune in and realize when we're it's not true. being ourself in a relationship or when we're feeling disconnected. And the reality I think that many of us don't understand is relationship shift and change. Yeah. As we get more connected with ourself, our relationships might begin right, to shift and change over time. So I think that is a great awareness to begin with, to attract and develop deeper, more authentic connections. As simple as this may sound, we have to practice being ourselves, or authentically mm -hmm. expressing ourselves to other people, mm -hmm. which for some of us means trying new things with new people in new environments, putting ourselves out there in a new way so that we can attract and create the deeper, more authentic connections it's that we're to looking for. To around yeah. the person, because usually I feel like I connect with someone when they're vulnerable and I'm vulnerable right. and suddenly it all starts happening. But if you're not, you know, that that's one, if one of the people yes. is not. Okay. Um, okay, here's our last question. It is from Colette. 
A friend is constantly interrupting our conversation to bring the topic back on herself. How can I engage her in the conversation without her reflecting it back on herself? Those people who are all about themselves. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. So first suggestion being trying not to take those moments personally. Yeah. When someone's interrupting us, focusing the conversation on themselves, it's usually for one of two reasons. They're uncomfortable with whatever is being spoken about or what they're feeling in response mm-hmm. to what's being spoken about. Right. Or they think they're trying to connect with us Mm -hmm. and they might not understand the impact of the interruption. So, again, while we can't change how someone interacts with us, we can be really direct and really specific about what we need in those moments. So stating, sharing with a friend, hey, I would like to, to tell you something right now, to share something with you. And it would be really helpful if you just listened or if you avoided offering advice, because that's another area I think yeah. where people jump in thinking they're being helpful, where really we just want to be heard. Yeah, totally. So you just flat out say it. Not everything has to be fixed, right? right? right. People just want to be listened to. What's, what are the questions you get asked the most? Like, I know that people are always asking you things, but... What's your- I think mainly questions around how do I develop authentic connections. There's a lot of us that feel really lonely, really disconnected, mm-hmm. even as I once was in relationships. And again, so much of it is colored by those earliest relationships where for so many different reasons, very few of us have had the attunement that we needed, have had our needs consistently met. We wear all of these masks, we modify mm-hmm. ourselves, and then mm-hmm. we're left not only us feeling unfulfilled, but usually the partners or the loved ones that we're surrounding ourselves with. I, mean, I feel like we all know when we put a circle in a square yeah. and we just keep thinking, if, if I'm an optimist so I can make it work, yeah. if I just keep trying harder, and you you find yourself thinking, like, why did, I, why did I put all that time and effort into something that wasn't right in the first place? Right, and then that feels stressful to be on the receiving yeah. end of that. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we have to modify that. ourselves yeah, or totally. someone's going to control ourselves, to control how we're being. Mm-hmm. Well, We've Dr. waited a long time for you yes, to come, so we're happy you that you're here. here. Thank and to you. to check out Dr. Nicole's book, How to Be the Love You Seek, you can go to today.com slash books. Okay.